What's up, guys? I recently completed post-production sound for a short film called Movement in Mirrors, which you can see over here, and I'll put a link to in the description. But it was a really fun job, and had me doing a lot of different post-production techniques to sort of take the film to the next level. So I thought it would be cool if I opened up the Pro Tools session I used to mix the movie, and I kind of took you through my method for mixing a movie, and also showed you guys some tips and tricks that you can do when working on projects of your own. Let's check it out. Okay guys, so here we are in the session. As you can see, I have the rough cut of the film up here and the rest of the tracks down here. So first thing I wanna talk about is uh, establishing your room tone. So for this particular film, the whole thing was just shot with camera audio. So I basically ended up scrapping all of the uh, camera audio, existing audio, and replacing it with my own sound effects, foley, and room tone. So when it comes to a uh, room tone, you want to first look at the various scenes that you're going to need to build for. For instance, I had a scene in a bathroom, over here a uh, outdoor scene in a park, and then finally a uh, scene in a bedroom and one in a doorway. So the way uh, I go about doing this is I use a stereo XY microphone just uh, in the quietest part of my house or your house, and then I just capture what is essentially silence. And then I like to turn that silence up with clip gain so I can uh, hear it fairly audibly, for instance. Now obviously that's ridiculously loud because I have it cranked up, but then I go and move that audio down about 29, 30 decibels. And basically you want this room tone. So in this case, there's also a little bit of an ambient fan. You want these to be registering at like very low, very low on your meter, probably down somewhere in the minus 30, maybe even minus 50 range. And the general rule you can think about is you want at least 20 decibels between your dialogue and the silence in the scene. When a scene starts to sound noisy and shitty, it's because that dialogue is maybe only 10 decibels or seven decibels above the, uh, the ambient noise in the scene. So that's that's one of the main things to keep in mind when mixing a movie. The bigger difference and more isolation you can get between dialogue and room tone, the better it will sound. So now uh, there's the next part, which would be the Foley track and the sound effects. And this is a combination of, uh, I like to do sounds I find online and also sometimes physically acting out the scene. So for instance here, we have that kind of swiping motion that she does. And you know, you can just watch the film and it feels a little odd to do this and actually put a close mic. Generally, I use a shotgun to isolate as much noise out of the Foley as possible and then actually record some of these actions, right? Wiping your shirt with uh, maybe a towel, brushing your teeth in front of the mic, you know, a spit sound effect that you can do. And it feels really weird when you're doing it, but the end result is something like this. And you see the water sound effect. It all comes out looking very good. And that's generally how I did the Foley for the rest of the film. So, so the uh, next outdoor scene, I actually brought up the uh, outside uh, ambience a little louder. Because if you think about it, the sounds of the city are going to be louder than when you're in your bathroom. So there, that sounds registering probably, you know, minus 20, a little higher. And then just to uh, increase the kind of ambience, you can use some panning. For instance, I have the sound of a, a jet plane here, along with a train in the background. So as you can see, there's a trolley running through the back of the scene. And that's one thing you can do as a sound designer. Uh, flesh out the scene, see what's happening in the action and accentuate that in the sound design. It's gonna help draw the viewer in. Okay. So moving on, we have more Foley, this time back in the bathroom. And then I got a uh, phone call, or the character gets a phone call. And obviously this is a pretty easy trick. You just go in and do it very aggressive filtering and some EQ in that 2.5K range to create the telephone vocal effect heard here. Hey Summer, Mindy and I are going to a pub if you want to join. I know you've been at the funeral all day today, but if you need some cheering up, hit me up. Pretty simple effect, but always a good one to keep in your back pocket. Next, we move here to a scene where she opens a door. And this is a uh, fun effect that I did. You basically, I believe it was done here. Yes, there's an uh, 
EQ automation to create that, uh, you know, when you open the door, you want the sound of the outside to bleed in. So this can be done here by fading down the room tone of just being indoors with a uh, EQ move with the automation. You see, we bring that uh, <clears throat> low pass filter and move it up. So you let whoosh, the sound of that outside world start to bleed in. Very good effect. And you also bring in, you know, the sound of those birds. Those are in that uh, outdoor track. Then once again, a little more Foley, in this case, a uh, sound of someone's telephone. So right now, aside from a couple of those EQ moves and the telephone vocal, that's, you know, a pretty basic, my, or at least my basic method of mixing a film. Obviously there hasn't been any dialogue right now, so this was, it's kind of a good project to demonstrate things like Foley, mixing ambiance, background noise, and the occasional uh, dialogue overdub. Then in this film, the reason I loved working on it, things proceed pretty normally and then they take a dark turn. The character goes into, uh, she goes to bed and she enters a dream sequence. And this is where I get to use something I love, which is doing dark ambience and kind of a horror vibe. So I'll play the scene, then explain kind of what I did. You basically hear that scary bass sound and this is one thing that I always do and if you work on film this is something you should do each time you create assets for a film for instance all the Foley in this film save it all and put it in a folder that you can call assets and then when you work on other films you can go and put your original assets in I could do a probably more in-depth video on how I created these dark ambient sounds but these sounds here are all combinations of uh, just dark and kind of menacing sounds I've made you have uh, these kind of bass synthesis sounds that were created for actually to emulate the sound of the force in a Star Wars fan film. And then you have this scary bass hit or kind of riser. If you're not listening on headphones or good speakers, they're gonna sound kind of, you might not be able to hear them, but I made all these for various horror movies with bass synthesizers. And because I have those uh, assets, I can go in to whatever film I'm working on and I can use my original sounds. And it's also good too because you can kind of retain character of your production when you create these sounds. And so this is the kind of ambiance for this scene. I sometimes you'll see here with these little guys bringing kind of a, a rumble because in horror and when you want to build tension, you can kind of use those washing high sounds and those rumbles to kind of make that uneasy feeling. Then we have mixing in a music track, which you kind of pull down a little above the ambiance. And in this case, we have this kind of dark uh, synth ambient piece that my friend made, and he did a great job. Definitely fits the mood of this scene. And you can basically uh, blend this in with your dark ambiance, and Hi, the ben. two er, complemented each other very well. All right, moving on. This scene is actually where we get some dialogue. So as you can see up here, we have uh, her basically talking to a demon version of herself. And there is, this was split up between just her regular voice, which I just mixed Hello. to sound very full and on top of the mix. And then her demon voice, where I basically added some modulation, then used of all things positive grid bias. They have a reverse delay in this plugin. I love, I sing this thing's praises too much, but I basically disabled the amp models and used the reverse delay in order to create this kind of whoop, 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 you know, demon sound effect. So her voice sounds like this. Hi there. Hi there. Um, nice and evil, nice and eerie. Cause you wanted, uh, when talking to the director, we wanted to distinguish the uh, just regular character from the kind of the evil character. And then one other cool demon trick we did here was using uh, Audio Suite, the pitch shift, to create her, uh, her really accentuate her last line where she says, what's the point in living and make it sound evil? That's so selfish. Or, sorry, it's a similar principle right there. But her kind of, the climax of the film, I would say, is almost when she does this line. What's the point in living? nice and creepy you know you kind of dropping that voice down a tritone is going to give you that that scary feeling next we uh used a riser from uh 
fantastic film pack and combined it with, you know, another bass riser to create uh, the effect, or I guess this would be the climax. Basically, she plunges her hand through glass and using the combination of the risers with the fade in to our big uh, sound effect. And this mirror blast was achieved by uh, basically combining several glass and pottery breaking sounds in another section, doing the sound design trick of uh, stacking and panning five separate sounds, and then using JSD clip and uh, to give it a lot of crisp and a lot of weight, and then even adding MH thump so it has a little bass impact. Basically, this sound I wanted to be louder than all the other sounds in the film. So if you think about the way the whole thing is mixed, it's like you're ramping the intensity of the sounds up until you get to... And then you hear that kind of that like uh, sound at the end. That's basically taking one of the, the samples from all the samples that were used to create the blast and slowing it down. And then I actually added the sound of a wind chime for when her hand uh, disintegrates. And you can really hear the punch of that glass break. That's coming from, uh, or coming from metric halo thump. As you can see, I'm adding 100 hertz and uh, 99 or yeah 99 and 141 hertz frequencies to it so boom it's almost got a bit of a punch to it then on these flashbacks we have this static sound that is heavily modulated and distorted and then we do the classic uh just high sine wave to end the film and all of this pulled together along with the music and dark ambience creates a very you know freaky dream you know dark vibe Pretty cool. Also, there's a lot of use of the reverb sends. Basically, I use a regular small reverb for just simulating inside spaces with a time usually under a second, and then the uh, outside verb, which is the fantastic towel reverb for nice modulated reverb for any time I wanted something to kind of ring out. Then, I actually, I believe I did some automation with this Blue Cat Gain plugin. Let me check real quick. Ah, yes, because I wanted the, uh, some of the scenes are louder than the other ones. For instance, the beginning is very quiet, subdued, and then the ending is loud, there's music, there's sound effects, and in order to balance the two and make it so the first scene isn't too quiet, I used automation with just a basic gain plugin to ensure that my first scene was loud enough that the person wouldn't have to adjust their volume. For instance, you can see on the final metering, these uh, sound effects are hitting at kind of the minus 18, minus 12 range. And that's with the 18 decibel boost from Blue Cat Gain. And then at the end, it turns into a 5 decibel boost, and that's to account for the fact that there's just more stuff happening. But still, as you can see, the film is registering kind of regular sound effects in that minus uh, 12 range. And then when there's dialogue... But you didn't hurt yourself. That's all that matters. She's registering a little higher. And then, you know, once you do this, you've got enough headroom that you can give this to, you know, the final mix just as a wave file to your editor and then they can adjust the volume from there. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you can use these techniques when you mix your own films. Till next time, peace.